Thanks so much for being with us on this Sunday morning. The U.S. Attorney General and the Homeland Security Secretary were in Ottawa this past Friday to meet with their Canadian counterparts. The cross-border flow of guns, drugs and migration were top of the agenda, with both countries agreeing to share more data. In a Canadian exclusive, I asked Secretary Mayorkas about those conversations and concerns around the shared border. Secretary Mayorkas, thank you for making the time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Pleasure. First, I want to just get your perspective on the state of things at the northern border. Obviously, the southern border has been the focus for you domestically for a long time, but the northern border has started to be an issue both in the U.S. and Canada. How would you characterize um, the crisis or if it's a crisis at the northern border? So um, we've been focused on our borders, our land borders, both south and north for years. Uh, we just uh, negotiated uh, the Safe Third Country yeah. Agreement and an incredibly important addendum to it. Uh, we spoke about information sharing in this context as well. We talked about uh, intensifying our focus in addressing human smuggling organizations um, and how uh, they exploit mm -hmm. vulnerable individuals uh, for profit. And we made tremendous progress in that regard as well. On uh, Title 42, which you, you just announced you were getting rid of this week, is there concern from your perspective that that will now force more people from the south up to the north? Just in the past 24 hours, we saw a number of uh, Mexican nationals trying to come from Canada into the U.S. So um, uh, Title 42, which is a public health authority, is ending on May 11th. Uh, we've declared the, uh, the end of the uh, COVID-19 uh, emergency the president did. Uh, we are uh, bringing uh, new enforcement measures uh, to bear. Uh, we also have created a new lawful, safe, and orderly pathways. The whole model that we are employing is to give people an opportunity, uh, those who qualify for relief, to reach the United States safely mm -hmm. and disincentivize irregular migration. And I spoke just a couple days ago uh, with Minister Frazier yep. about our work together in addressing uh, the, the, the challenge of migration. You know, it is not something specific to the southern border of the United States or the northern border right. of the United States. This is a challenge that is gripping the entire hemisphere. Mm -hmm. We're seeing an unprecedented level of migration around the world and in our region. But I wonder if, uh, for instance, Canada put back in place visa requirements for Mexicans, whether that would alleviate some of the pressure of people trying to come through the northern border into the U.S. Have you discussed those visa requirements, whether you'd like those to come back into place? Uh, so I think that's a decision that um, uh, the Canadian officials are, are going to make. Uh, we talk about this issue and many issues that impact uh, the migration of people. We also talk about the root causes. Mm -hmm. Why do people leave their homes? Yeah. Um, and what are the what are the factors that drive them to do that, and how we can invest in the countries of origin uh, to prevent that irregular I, migration? I know you're not going to tell the Canadian government what to do, but did have you, was it raised over the course of the past day and a half? Is it something that you are trying to have a conversation about? So today, you, you know, the last day and a half was really focused on criminal conduct. And when we talk about migration, our focus over the last day and a half was really on the smuggling organizations, uh, their intertwinement with cartels yeah. that peddle in other uh, forms of death and destruction, and how we can best uh, combat them. On human trafficking, which you've talked about a few times, I'm sure you're aware of the case most recently in Aquasasne uh, at the St. Lawrence River, where eight people uh, died while they were trying to cross that river, including two small children. Uh, I know you have started, or your department has started, a parallel investigation. What do you think is the likelihood, in a case like that, that charges would be laid? So I'm going to defer to our Attorney General, okay. uh, Merrick Garland. Uh, I don't want to comment on an, an active investigation, but I think there's a very important message to communicate. Uh, individuals who wish to arrive at a country of destination for a better life need to do so through lawful means, through safe and orderly pathways. They risk their lives and their life savings in the hands of smugglers who only seek to exploit them for profit. And we have not only a security obligation, but a humanitarian obligation to, to combat those smuggling operations and to really excise them from of the dynamic of migration. One of the problems, of course, in this particular area is that the territory, the First Nation itself, goes on both sides of the borders. Yes. The Aquasasne have themselves said, why don't you allow us the territory 
to be under our jurisdiction so we can police it. Is that something that you would consider or is that something you've discussed with Canadian officials? So that's something that we didn't address uh, today and um, uh, it's uh, it's one of those issues that is in uh, the course of uh, much broader uh, discussions. Those uh, implicate quite a number of different issues outside the realm of migration. The changes to the Safe Third Country Agreement made by the Prime Minister and the President uh, last month, while they deal with the problem particularly at the Quebec irregular crossing, there are concerns that that will open people up to trying to do more um, you know, illegal crossings and, and sort of dangerous crossings at different places. How, how concerned are you about that? We have an obligation to secure our borders. Borders are meaningful boundaries between countries. There is a way uh, to, um, to migrate, and that is through lawful, safe, and orderly means. And we will address irregular migration that involves illegal crossings at every turn. The 15,000 migrants that Canada committed to at that same visit, do, do you have a sense yet of how that's going to be uh, put into place? Where those people are going to come from or how you're going to go and sort of push them up to Canada? So uh, Minister Fraser and I uh, discussed that uh, just a couple days ago. Um, yesterday, we in the United States announced regional processing centers, yes, I saw uh, that. hubs yeah. uh, in Guatemala and Colombia to begin. Uh, where people can seek uh, refugee status and other forms of humanitarian relief. Um, Minister Fraser and I talked about the possibility of Canada being a destination country uh, for individuals whom we have screened and processed through those regional processing centers. So we're looking at how we can accomplish that. But you know, the, the challenge of migration is a hemispheric one, sure. and hemispheric challenges require hemispheric solutions. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about foreign interference because you recently announced what you called a 90-day sprint to try and look at the ways China might influence uh, the United States in the future, how you can prevent that. Can you tell me a little bit about what, what you're looking to find there and, and why you're taking that action? So um, the People's Republic of China, the PRC, um, uh, poses um, a threat in a number of different uh, domains right. in the cybersecurity arena, in the theft of intellectual property, in the use of forced labor, in the manufacture uh, of goods, in the spread of disinformation uh, to sow discord. And what we want to do is identify um, all of the means and instrumentalities that they employ in each domain and uh, really ensure that we are taking collective action to address them. Do you feel like a foreign agent registry is effective? And if so, how? Well, uh, that is something that the Attorney General of the United yeah. States uh, spoke of uh, today yeah. uh, in the uh, forum. And we shared some of the practices and laws that we have in place uh, to see if they would be of utility uh, to our partners in Canada. What and whether they were, were you talking about in terms of that that registry? I, I think, given the sensitivity, um, I'll probably not delve further into that. Are are you concerned as you see um, more evidence? We of course have had some news stories of late about attempts to interfere in our elections. How real is are those threats, and how serious should countries like Canada and the U.S. be taking it? I think that we have to um, uh, take those threats very very seriously, and it's not exclusive by any means. Uh, to the PRC. Uh, it is something that we have to be quite alert to from other nation states, states such as Russia, Iran, North Korea, for example. Secretary, nice of you to make the time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure.